you know if we're talking Jurassic World, I gotta bring in my pal Jeff. Jeff, your movie sounds weird. Hey guys, thanks for joining me on another episode of Side Flick. We got so much movie news to talk about. We got an update on Halloween Kills, even an update on Halloween Ends, the fourth film in the Halloween franchise. I'm going to be showing you some set photos of James Gunn's Suicide Squad, giving you a look at the costumes and some surprise characters in there that I'm happy to see. Even the full plot synopsis for Jurassic World 3 that does sound a little iffy to me. That is so much more guys, so make sure I'm able to pay Jeff's salary and hit that like button. I'd hate to fire this guy. He's got a kid. He's still in an egg, and I'm pretty hungry. But be sure to comment down below your thoughts on these news topics. All right, getting the first one out of the way, let's talk some Michael Myers. All right, so we know we have Halloween Kills opening up this year, as I still like to refer to it, Halloween Stabby Stabby. And from everything we've heard so far, it is going to be the stabbiest of stabbies. Jason Blum was recently asked about the film and what we can expect from it, and his comments got me really happy about this latest installment. He was asked if Halloween Kills feels like a complete movie, because technically since Blumhouse decided to announce two sequels to the Halloween movie that came out in 2018, we already know that the second film is basically going to be set up for the third film, Halloween Ends. Jason Blum went ahead and said, I worried about it until I saw the second one. And David Gordon Green, the director, worried about it. That it would feel like, remember Lord of the Rings? Like you weren't getting the full story? It doesn't feel like that at all. Halloween Kills feels like a complete movie. There's a first, a second, and a third. It has a big end. You still know from the end of the second movie where the third movie is going, but the second movie ends in a totally satisfying way. Thank freaking goodness, man, because one of the things I was worried about with Halloween Kills is that it was all just going to be pure setup, building up our anticipation for that third movie, whatever it is that was going to happen in it. Even more so when we saw footage of Halloween Kills and we realized that this movie takes place the exact same night as Halloween 2018. Can you really give us a great story with the limited amount of time you left yourself by the end of that movie? But then we got those positive test screening reactions that went through the roof. I am getting my hopes up utterly high for this film. You gotta point out that Jason Blum there did say it has a big end. I'm still going with, even though if this feels like a complete story, it's gonna end on a big cliffhanger. It's gonna end with some sort of Infinity War style ending where you're kind of upset, you're kind of mad. Heck, Michael Myers could win by the end of this movie. We can see Michael Myers' version of sitting down on the log, staring down at sunset, and the film just ending on him. How do you feel about Jason Blum's comments that Halloween Kills does feel like a complete movie and not just filler or setup for another film? Sticking on the horror movie train for a little bit, one horror movie that just got announced that is getting a prequel has me a little curious. Some of you horror fans out there might know of a film entitled Orphan. It's a film that came out in 2009. If you know nothing about this movie, then I suggest you give it a watch. It's one of those films that might seem a little dated. You might not be all that way into it, but by the time that film ends, it has such a mind-blowing twist that you're like, Okay, that was pretty creepy. Now they're wanting to go ahead and make a prequel about this movie and dive in a little deeper into the story of Esther. The only problem is they're hiring the director from The Boy and The Boy 2. Now look, I haven't seen The Boy 2 yet. Probably by the time this video is out, I have a review out on my channel. I'm watching it in, well, like 20 minutes. The first boy is kind of like in the same vein of Orphan, where the movie was just okay and it had a sort of mind-blowing twist ending, but still didn't leave me as satisfied of when I I watched Orphan. I don't have all the faith in the world that this director will be able to elevate the story of Orphan for modern age. I mean, it has been over 10 years now. It's such a random time for you to bring this in. You can't even use the same little girl because if you know the twist of Orphan, which again, I don't want to spoil for those who haven't seen the movie, you can't really bring that little girl back. But out of sure curiosity and respect for the first movie, I'm willing to go ahead and watch this Orphan prequel. But what about you guys? Now, 2021 is shaping to be one of the best years for comic book movies in a a long time we have the Batman and we're gonna have the Suicide Squad coming out directed by James Gunn the man who gave us Guardians of the Galaxy he's currently shooting right now the Suicide Squad production is going full throttle and we've got now some behind the scene photos of the team members for the Suicide Squad and I gotta say, I'm loving their kooky costumes. Now, it hasn't been 100% confirmed who each one of these characters are, but just from looking at them, it's easy to confirm who they will be. I mean, you have Harley Quinn there. I love how she's getting the red and black hair color scheme. It is way more traditional in line with her cartoon counterpart of where she originated from, so I love the respect being paid into that. If you know, a couple months ago, we had more leaked Suicide Squad photos of probably the first team in the movie. It said that the Suicide Squad will open 
open with a current Suicide Squad team going out on a mission and a bunch of them dying off from their bomb necklaces going off. I also really, really dig the costume for Polka Dot Man. I mean, all you have to do is put on a onesie and have some polka dots on it, but they went the extra mile and I like that. They're gonna find a way to make Polka Dot Man's powers so cool where you're gonna walk out that movie going, I kind of wish I had polka dot powers. But probably my favorite one and the one I'm most looking forward to just for the visual effects on this character is Shark King. Shark King, if you don't know, is a famous DC villain where it's basically a half man, half shark looking thing. He's premiered on the Flash TV series looking pretty damn good, if I might say. That's the voice actor in costume right there in a motion capture suit. So we'll see the visual effects later on because we did have that leak that he'd be in the movie, but it wasn't confirmed. Now looking at this, He's gonna be in the movie. An evil shark man being part of this new Suicide Squad? Take my money. How do you guys feel about these leaked Suicide Squad photos and the look of the team costumes? So we just recently in theaters had Sonic the Hedgehog the movie, which turned out to be a very pleasant CGI live action hybrid film. And one of the next CGI live action hybrid films I'm really looking forward to is Tom and Jerry. If you didn't know, they are coming out with a live action slash CGI hybrid of Tom and Jerry, one of my favorite cartoons growing up. I'm waiting for the day that we're gonna get the look of the designs of Tom and Jerry. From some leaks, they might not be going with a realistic look similar to Sonic. They might just be actually pulling from their 2D counterparts and then just adding a little bit more dimension and shadows to them. So there might not be much to expect there, but we recently had Michael Pena talking about the movie and he has nothing but high praises to say about it. What this all basically sums up here is that Michael Pena is really praising the story of Tom and Jerry, saying that it's really good, that even Chloe Moretz, who is the main character of this movie, does a great job. If you did know the plot for this film is that Tom and Jerry live in a mansion they've been enemies for life until the owner of that mansion passes away and then some new owners step in having tom and jerry team up to protect their home even peter dinklage who is said to be the villain i just really want to know the fan community's excitement for the live action tom and jerry and if anyone is actually going to be interested in what this film turns out to be after watching a live action CGI hybrid that was Sonic the Hedgehog the movie. Let me know your thoughts down below. But all right now, Jurassic World 3, which I can't believe how excited I actually am for this Jurassic Park movie. I had this same level of excitement with the first one that they were coming out with in the reboot with Chris Pratt and Bryce Dallas Howard. Then the second one, I was like, okay, maybe I'll watch it. But this one, something about me has me so excited just because of how different it's going to be. And now we know it's going to be very different because the plot has leaked online. We know this plot is legitimate because it comes from Universal's own licensing website. A very dedicated fan was able to find it, screenshot it, show it to the public before it was erased. And the story for Jurassic World 3 goes as, when young Macy is abducted by dino poachers, Owen and Claire set out to find and rescue her. With their journey taking them to a dinosaur habitat, operated by a global corporation with a possibly sinister agenda that's even now being investigated by Alan Grant and Ellie Sattler. Part of that has me really excited because of that mention of Alan Grant and Ellie Sattler, those original characters from the first Jurassic Park. To me, it really is not a Jurassic Park movie unless you have Alan Grant in the film. It's one of the reasons I will always respect Jurassic Park 3 and have it in high standards. And knowing that Alan Grant and Ellie Sattler are still continuing their investigative work with dinosaurs and helping the community and trying to take down this organization that is obviously trying to do evil things to dinosaur is pretty cool. The part to me that seems a little iffy is the involvement of Macy. If you didn't know, by the end of Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, it was a big reveal that you find out that the little girl in the movie Macy is actually a clone of the daughter of who was working on the Jurassic World Park, Lockwood. It's obviously a very super illegal thing that he did to clone a human being and actually do it successfully it seems now that word has got out that she is a clone and now evil people want to take her because she holds the key to cloning other dinosaurs or maybe even other humans i don't see how that would be owen or claire's responsibility to save her i would just think they do it out of the goodness of their heart also i guess i was expecting this to focus more on the dinosaurs at large and maybe how they're affecting the public when this feels more like a personal story staying away from the dinosaurs in the world you also got to pair that up with chris pratt's recent comments that jurassic world 3 is gonna feel like avengers endgame where 
everyone in the Jurassic World community is just going to be a part of this film because we've already gotten some confirmed people, obviously the big names like from the original Jurassic Park franchise and even some lesser known characters that are also being confirmed to come back that I'm happy with but some ones that we might not expect that could be surprises like the little boy from the third Jurassic World movie. I'd love to see what he's been up to and I know maybe a far stretch but Samuel Jackson had an off-screen death and if you know anything about movies, if your death happened off-screen, there's always a possibility you can come back. Of course he lost an arm, but he can come back with a prosthetic. I'd love to see Sam Jackson yelling at some dinosaurs. Heck, he can even be the one behind this evil corporation because he's got a vendetta for a dinosaur taking his arm. Maybe he wants to clone an arm back. Some lizard Spider-Man stuff going on here. The other cool thing that we got from this leak is the working title for Jurassic World 3 seems to be Arcadia. The basic definition for Arcadia means to be in harmony with nature. That's kind of cool and goes in line with what they're going with. Dinosaurs, humans, living in harmony. Who knows how this film ends, man. I'm feeling that like it's just going to be an atomic bomb wiping out everybody. But I'm really curious to hear what you guys think about this leaked Jurassic World 3 plot. And does it have you interested? Are you like me and are a little iffy about it and will want to see some footage first? But that's just some of the news topics that interested me in the past few days, guys. Make sure to leave your thoughts down below. Don't forget to hit that like button. Little Jeffy is counting on you. But as always, my name is Chris. Take care.